Right now, Tropical Storm Ian is strengthening in the Caribbean and is forecast to batter Florida as a major hurricane next week. A hurricane barreling toward Florida, declaring a state of emergency for all 67 counties and activating thousands of National Guardsmen. But not do it too early in case there's a last-minute shift in the storm's track, as we have seen in recent years with examples like megastorms. You're living a dream, you know? You're like, there's no way that ocean's coming up into my living room. Summer 2022. Communities are rebuilding, tourists are returning, and all is normal as a very quiet tropical season had most breathing a sigh of fresh air from the hellacious hurricane seasons of the past. But that air was about to turn dark and cold, and what this year was about to prove is that it only takes one storm to make an overall slow season memorable, and for all of the wrong reasons. The U.S. was able to avoid any major impacting events through the peak of hurricane season, However, a sleeping bear was beginning to awake from its slumber as a tropical wave began to enter the Caribbean. Ian had his eyes set on Florida, but was expected to weaken upon approach as wind shear would increase closer to landfall. We didn't know it yet, but Ian's forecast would be anything but, and the deadliest disaster we have ever documented was waiting to unfold, and an unlikely story of survival would bond us to a couple Floridians for the rest of our lives. So we are south of Fort Myers, or no, where are we? North of Fort Myers. We're north of Fort Myers, heading south towards Fort Myers. We just left Punta Gorda. So we're scoping out all these locations along the coastline to see where we want to ride out the storm because it's going further and further south every run. Take note of all the beauty, as this once thriving community was just one day away from total disaster. Nothing but your footprints. We didn't realize it at the time, just how daunting this statement on this sign would be. As Ian began his final approach and inched closer and closer to the Florida coast, we topped off our tanks, still extremely unsettled by how many people appeared to be staying behind for the storm. This would be the last time we'd see this beautiful oasis in its current state, and deployed one of the probes onto Fort Myers Beach. Oh, this one's vertical. It's not like our big so that's perfect. Probe number two deployed here in Port Charlotte, Florida. Facing off toward some homes that are unfortunately in the, the surge zone. Um, hurricane Ian is now a powerful category four hurricane and is expected to make landfall here in the next probably 10 hours or so. And uh, 140 mile per hour winds are possible. Special advisory is being issued to update Ian's forecast intensity. Recent NOAA and Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunter flight level winds are as high as 160 knots with SFMR data around 135 knots and a central pressure down to 937 millibars. This supports a current intensity of 135 knots. The forecast intensity is raised to 135 knots at landfall. And we are now forecasting catastrophic storm surge of up to 12 to 16 feet from Inglewood to Bonita Beach, Florida. No other significant changes remain to the forecast. So that's right where our one probe is, because Inglewood is just north of Fort Myers Beach, Bonita is just south. <coughs> so we have one probe in the absolutely catastrophic zone. So many people still just driving around. It's close. That was lightning. Wow, that's crazy.
Indians began to batter communities in Englewood. Further to the south in Fort Myers Beach, water slowly starts to fill the streets as storm surge begins to get pushed inland and the fight for survival would soon begin. Waters continue to steadily rise and a door opens in the home of Todd and Annetta. Several moments tick by with a brief sigh of relief seeing their car appear to be leaving in a last ditch effort to escape. But this relief was short lived as Todd walks back across the street and re-enters the home for the very last time. Hanging out, that's what we did, you know? And we kind of went about with it, but everybody was kind of getting nervous, so. The, that was, in my head at the time, that, that was like safe zone, you know? It's not gonna get up from all the way down the beach, all the way up across the street. If I leave it here, it might get, the tires might get wet or something like that, you know? I didn't think like that would be the least of my worries. Waters continue to surge into the street, and Annette's car is lifted off the ground and floats into the nearby harbor. Large debris can be seen floating across the street from neighboring homes and businesses being torn to pieces by the relentless waves. I was just watching the water go from this much to this much to this, and that happened. It went from my ankles to my knees probably in like a, maybe like half an hour. I was looking outside. I kept trying to open the glass window and look outside, and I see my neighbor's house floating right towards me, and I was like, it's kind of, I thought when his house bumps into my house, it's gonna take the whole house out. And I was like, we gotta go, we gotta get ready. She already had a life jacket on because she put that on earlier, like as a joke. It had the, the pins on it. So I ended up tying them up with my bag. She cut the wakeboard rope off, tied it to one dog's collar and the other dog's collar, and then put it through her, her life jacket. And she went out the window, because now I can feel the house is lifting up and slamming. You know, it's not even connected anymore. It's like boom. The small house can take no more and begins to detach and crumble with Annette, Todd, and their dogs still trapped inside. I pushed them under the water and pushed them out of the window and she pulled them with her and now I'm inside the room still but the dresser that was over there floated back here and then floated, right, hit me right in the back and then the water went up. It was like a wave, like, like the, you look out the front window, you can see the sky at one point and then you can see underwater at one point, and it just kept going like that, up and down. And I was getting hit up against the ceiling, like up against the corner of the ceiling of the wall. And I, as soon as I seen that the window was facing not underwater, I pulled it out, I pulled the whole frame out because there was only a little window, I couldn't fit to it. But that's when I cut myself right here, I pulled the window out, but then it went back underwater, and then I got pushed back up into the ceiling, and I had to dive under the water and find that window and swim out of the window and come back up. Further to the north, Ian's ferocious winds now exceed over 140 miles an hour and tears the community of Englewood to pieces. Ian continued to defy all forecast and continued its southern trek, forcing us to make a decision. Try and go east. If you want to, I don't think we're getting any surge up here. Risk missing the eye or battle the 150 mile per hour winds for 20 miles while dodging debris speeding by like bullets. What's up? I don't know why he went downstream with the sheet metal. That's scary. Oh.
center in the middle. You can see behind me kind of the darker and the brighter areas. And now we're almost dead calm. So we did it, we navigated back east. And, oh yeah, yeah, it's dead calm. Back on Fort Myers Beach, Todd, Annette, and their two dogs continue to fight for their lives as they are swept away by the powerful current. All I'm screaming, I never screamed so much in my life. Help, help, baby. I'm telling her to help me. She's screaming for me to help her. I am not getting, I'm not letting go until, until he is out and he got out. And we, we just had no control over, it's not like we swam to a perfect spot. We just got pushed and she just grabbed onto the first tree and there was a telephone pole in the water that I grabbed onto. But once I grabbed onto it, I, I looked at my arm was just bleeding. And, and I had no more energy to swim. My arms were tired. And I just let go, you know, and I just gave up. I was like, this is the way I'm gonna go. We were all just floating. There was no swimming. We were just floating with the every with the house. <laughs> Glass and nails and I had to climb up on top of that, I scratched my whole chest, like climbing over it. And, I didn't even have any energy. I don't know how I grabbed up and I pulled myself up onto their back porch. Several unbearable hours go by after Todd and Annette get separated before a true miracle unfolds. In that house, just thinking like, damn, man. I was just coming to terms with the fact that I lost my girl and I lost my dog. I heard screaming. I seen three little heads popping up in the water. That's how long, she was in that tree. It must've been like at least like three and a half, four hours. And they were like hurting, they were like, struggling to like stay above the water, even with the like, cause she has two 60 pound dogs tied to her. And with the life jacket, she's still like barely staying, up, like pushing the dogs up. And I jumped back in the water, even with my arm, I jumped back in when I grabbed one dog, cause I know that they're all tied together, pull them all in. And they all just went in the house and they all just threw themselves down and stopped. We all just stopped crying. Ian's second eye wall continues to lash the Florida coast with winds more powerful than the last. were now too dangerous for us to be outside and were escorted back into the hotel for safety. But our shelter was now becoming damaged as pieces of the roof were torn off and several windows busted out. It's coming out of here. Oh yeah, the electrical plastic yeah, that's little conduit. Cool. Leading to a steady stream of water leaking into some rooms. All right, so it's the end of our chase. It is still September 27th, 28th. 28th. Uh, and as you can see, we have no power. The, we actually had a really intense back side of the eye wall that we weren't expecting. We came back here to edit and kind of unwind. We actually got drilled by the strongest winds that we've had so far. And now the roof is missing. Yeah. And multiple windows have been broken out of other. Really nice old day that gave me some snacks. Um, it's like 50-50, people are really nice here, and then other people are getting a little rowdy, but you know. And then we've got our, I just ran outside to uh, configure a charging station, which I took out of one of the surge probes that we already recovered. Yep. That's gonna, should charge this, right? Maybe? <coughs> yeah! We are heading down to Fort Myers Beach. We're gonna see how close we can get. We know this area got record-breaking surge. Fort Myers Beach, at least over 10 feet. Fort Myers proper, at least six feet. So we're gonna see how close we can get. And we have a probe down there that is going to have some absolutely phenomenal footage. I mean, I don't even know what's on there. So we're gonna see if we can get it, but I'm not sure we're gonna be able to get down there. We knew it was going to be bad but nothing could have prepared us for just how bad Fort Myers Beach would be. It 
places we saw just 24 hours prior lay in utter ruin. Overwhelmed with emotions, we watched in awe at what the probe had captured and quickly uploaded it to social media to get the word out of just how truly bad it was. The video instantly went viral, and it wasn't until a few comments stating that they noticed someone peek their head out of the door and hoped they were okay that we realized someone was inside. The drive back to Tampa was silent, and our stomachs were in knots, thinking we had just uploaded someone's final moments for the world to see and felt like absolutely horrible human beings. But the following morning, we woke up to a message stating that they were a family member of the residents in the home and told us about the harrowing encounter and stated that they were alive. We breathed a huge sigh of relief and asked if we could help in any way. So we stocked up on supplies and just 24 hours after we thought we captured someone's last moments on earth, we were shaking their hands and even showed us the messages he sent to his mom the moment they realized that they were in trouble. Two weeks later, we returned to Florida, and our newfound friends were ready to tell their story for the world to hear. I want everybody to see that. Every single time there's a hurricane, even a Category 1 hurricane, if there's a little slight chance of a storm surge, show that video, because it'll happen, especially if you live on the beach. It's not, it's not if it'll happen, it's when it'll happen. Thank you guys so much, man. Thank you guys. Really back on.